Hey guys, so I'm gonna do a gear thing here. I haven't done a, a gear thing in a long time and you know I love gear. So this will be for you guys and gals that are into shiny things. Um, I love uh, uh, all kinds of stuff. I have problems with a few things as far as buying too much of it. I love knives. I gotta stop that action, although I do need two more. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna go over what I'm taking to the boat when I'm there. So I wanna do a lot of fly fishing, I wanna do a lot of hiking, I wanna do a lot of photography, um, and I just wanna, I wanna keep it tight as possible. It's not a big place, it's like living in a tiny home when I'm there, so I don't wanna stuff it full of crap. Just stuff I'm gonna use. Um, so it's gonna be a tough call. So I'm gonna decide on uh, what knife I'm gonna take, um, you know, what kind of gear I'm gonna bring. So I'm gonna take you along for that. If you're interested, um, continue watching. If not, don't. All right, if you guys and gals are into bourbon, give this one a shot. I did last night, very tasty. So here's my dilemma. I've got too many knives and I just wanna bring one. I can't be cramming that bolt full of stuff, it's small. Um, so I, I gotta decide on what I'm gonna take. So that is my dilemma and here is the lineup. Here is the Mora Garberg with the multi-mount and this one is in carbon. I did a review of all these knives, um, so I'll put a link to those in the description below. So this is an awesome knife. This is a Scandi grind, of course, and it's a beauty knife. I love it. It's a, it's awesome. The price is right. Everything about this thing is, is just killer good. Um, but you know what? It's carbon, and I'm going on the salty sea. The air's salty. Everything's salty, and I'm pretty salty, but uh, this guy, I don't think it's a real issue. Uh, you know what, if you look after them, they're not gonna rust on you. So this might go. This, again, is on my uh, list for sure. Another one that's on my list is a Scandi Grind is this beauty right here. This is a Hella Harding, and these guys, uh, the Scandi Grind knives, you can really get sharp, and I find I can get them sharp easily uh, compared to like a Convex Grind. So this thing is deadly sharp. It's an awesome knife. It's a rat tail tang, not really a bush crafty knife. I mean, of course, you can use anything um, for bushcraft, but with that rat tail tang, you can, you know, it can bend. I think I actually bent this. Um, and it's a beauty. I don't know if I want to beat on it or any of that stuff. Not that I'm going to, but it's nice to have that option. Again, a beauty knife, and I'm thinking I need another Hella knife. Um, I don't need any knives, but that's what I'm thinking. This one here, this is a beauty. This is an SE3. Again, link to that review in the description below. This is an awesome knife. Again, carbon, just a beauty little knife. Um, I love everything about it, the jimping, uh, the choil. Uh, it's just a cool, cool blade for sure. Um, the only thing I don't love, although it's never failed, is the retention. It snaps in nice and tight. I don't think it's gonna come out, but it, it makes me a little bit paranoid that it's gonna fly out and as I tumble down a hill or and I'm gonna land on it and things are gonna get ugly. That's just in the back of my brain, I don't know why. Uh, it just doesn't have retention uh, like a strap or something that I can see. It does stay in nice and tight. And again, it's never failed me, but it's just kind of a weird thing I'm always thinking about. So that is an option. Uh, what else we got? I've got a couple beauties that I should do something with. Um, this is my old knife from back in the day. I think I've had this since I was 15 or so. Beauty old hunting knife. This is carbon and it's rusty. I've got to do something about that. Look at that. So I'm going to do a restoration on this for sure. Uh, restore these two beauties. And this is my dad's old hunting knife, uh, which is even cooler. And I've got to do the same thing. Um, these are not any big money knives, but they are um, kind of special. My all time favorite is probably going to go with me. And it's this guy. This is, of course, you probably know, a Bark River Bravo 1. And these are beastly knives. Look at this thing. It's got a convex grind. Um, it's a little bit harder to sharpen, for me anyway, than the Scandi grind stuff. But these are, this is an awesome knife. So this, between this guy, I think, and uh, the Mora, and reason being is I love the way I can carry these. I usually carry these on a, a strap on my shoulder, on my pack, and they're upside down, great retention. I can get them out quick and easy. So that's kind of a, that's kind of a bonus for me, and, and definitely I need to decide which one. So this is the same kind of deal. You just snap, strap it in, bingo, bango, and you can get it out quick and easy, but it's not going anywhere unless you snap it, so it's quick. 
Um, and you can also carry this on your pack upside down. That's how I rock that thing usually. And it's on a pack strap. So it's right there on my shoulder, uh, usually my left shoulder. So I can open it with my right hand and pull it out. I can open it with my left hand as well. So if anything happened, I can get at it. Um, it's also cool because you can carry it like a scout carry on your belt. So it's not dangling on, the, on your hip. And the reason I don't dangle it on my hip is because I have bear spray on my hip. Uh, so these guys are usually on my pack. So it's between these two and I'm not sure which one yet. So that's what I got to decide on for sure. There's other little stuff I'm going to bring as well. And here it is guys. This is a, a must have for me anyway. This is a GWG 1000. It's a G-Shock. And who knew a G-Shock could cost a thousand dollars. These things are tough as nails and uh, pretty amazing. This is solar charged so you don't need a, a battery although it does have one and it will last about two years. Let's say you got stranded in a cave, uh, the battery will go for about two years uncharged. So this guy I should do a review on because this is one beast of a watch. So here's the next uh, little thing I'm gonna be carrying when say hiking or fishing or whatever, uh, not on the boat of course, but if I'm out there fly fishing in the bush, um, there isn't any grizz there where I am in the south part of the island. I, I believe there is in the north part. I'll have to double check that. So it's a chance you could run into one, but uh, I think they're slim um, where I'm going to be at for now anyway. Uh, so I just got a small can of spray. Uh, there's supposed to be a ton of uh, cougars there, but uh, you know what? I don't have a thing with cougars. I'm not really worried about them for some reason. Uh, grizz on the other hand, uh, that's that's the next level in my mind anyway. So this guy's coming for sure. Um, what else we got? So these guys I've made with that Chinese uh, cobbler or sewing machine. I think I did a, a video on that. I'll put a link to that if I can find it in the description below. This is a box bag, I guess you'd call it. And I made these with that um, thing. This has been great. I got all my charging supplies in there you know battery chargers cables whatever and uh, again just kind of made this with some scrap or whatever else I have got lying around uh, I do them in the leather as well so that's kind of fun and here's another one so these work great and they didn't cost me anything other than my labor so some of you know I just put new soles on my old Doc Martens and I think I did a little video on that um, but here they are and they've been awesome I love these boots I've had them forever but these uh, soles suck. I don't know what kind of compound this is um, as far as what, what sole of, or what Vibram sole this is, but it's great for street and screwing around, uh, you know, driving and it's really comfortable and such, but deadly slippery on wet rocks. And I almost took a couple flyers um, with those. So I'm not gonna be hiking much uh, as much as I was on the island with these guys. I'm gonna bring my favorite all time hiking boots and these are handwag. These also have Vibram soles, but these things aren't deadly on wet stuff, rocks. They just, it's a little grippier. I think it's a softer compound. Uh, I'm not 100% sure on the compound, but these things are just bloody awesome. So these are going in the bag as well. So I'm gonna try and bring more photography into the channel. I love taking photos and the channel kind of revolves around whatever I'm doing. I'm gonna try and uh, invite you along. Uh, it's not, maybe what you're into all the time. And it's not on one subject ever, this channel anyway. And that might be a problem with it, I'm not sure. But I'm just gonna do uh, my channel, what I'm, what I'm doing and what I'm, I'm, I like to do. And what I like to do is uh, take photos. And I love film photography. Uh, I like digital as well, but I love film photography. So here's the two cameras I brought last time. I'm not sure um, if I'm gonna do it again this time. And this is the Canon AE-1 which is an awesome camera. I've got a couple lenses for it. And this is my Leica M3, and this is a bloody awesome camera. Um, it's a rangefinder. I like rangefinders better than, let's say, this type of focusing. They're both manual focus. It's got the 50 mil Summicron on it. So I've had these both out to the island, and I tell you what, um, some of the stuff I'm doing, um, you know, I'm worried about this camera. I'm worried about dumping in the river. I'm worried about falling off, uh, falling into some rocks and I'm, I just worry about this. So the more expensive your gear is, the more you jones about it and maybe have anxiety over it. So something to keep in mind for sure. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna do here. I, I, I don't wanna, I do wanna take the like up, but I find myself, uh, you know, I'm just more paranoid about it with some of the stuff I'm doing. 
um, if it's more of a planned kind of photo deal and not a adventure or hiking fly fishing then maybe I'll just leave this at home not sure yet what I'm doing but again I'm definitely going to bring more photography into the channel and I'm trying to buy a actual video camera um, that will do wildlife and stuff so that's kind of my next deal um, so here is the AE1 that's a beauty it's got the 28 mil on it I've got some ND filters for it and I also have a 50 mil and I have a macro um, telephoto that I might just bring so this guy might be the deal for me um, I'm not sure if I'm going to bring the Leica but we'll see this is a must-have for anybody that's into just hiking and scooting around. Uh, this is a life straw, and this is the one with the built-in filter. Uh, this thing has been awesome. I, I swear you could probably uh, use this in a porta potty and survive. I'm definitely taking my fly fishing gear. I'm not going to go into all that, um, but I'm going to take my uh, four-weight fly rod setup um, and get onto some of those beauty uh, rivers that I've been looking at. This is a cool bag. It's cheap as dirt on Amazon. I'll put a link to that in the description below, but I've been using it a lot. It's been great um, for my long road trips. I put survival gear in here, whatever you want. I have my own special mix that I put in here and it just throws in the back of the 4Runner or the RX or the GX470 when I was driving that. It's pretty cool. It's a military style. So the closure has got this pin. You just put this like that. You put this guy over like this and like that that closes the top up and you just clip that on so it can't open up so it's a pretty cool little duffel and again cheap as dirt i think it's cotton or canvas whatever it is uh, i'm not sure size wise uh, i think it's 30 30 liter um, but it's a pretty sweet little deal and it's been really good um, again it's been in the back of my car so that just keeps my crap that i'm taking and let's say the car went up in flames you can throw this over your shoulders like a backpack not that i'd use this as a backpack it's not going to be that comfortable but you can if you've got to get the hell out of dodge and uh yeah so it's got the uh, backpack set up here so it's kind of cool and another one that i've been using is this this is a roll top bag and this is waterproof basically you can, once this is rolled up um like all those waterproof bags you just roll it up and it's good to go it'll float it won't take on water it's pretty cool it's got this waterproof zipper here and both these bags i think for sure they're made in china like most things um, but this has been great and i'm going to definitely use it more um, with the boat and it's kind of wet weather out there so you know what i'm actually thinking of changing up my pack system because of the rain uh, a lot of the packs come with those little uh, bags that go over it uh, rainproof waterproof bags that kind of cinch over the top but this is less just a simple cheap uh, roll top bag this waterproof so I'll put a link to this in the description below and this has been great and I'm definitely going to use this more um, as I hike around there so this thing I've been using for quite a while now and it's been awesome uh, I believe this is a cheap um, Amazon item as well and it's been great so what I have in here is some uh, just some survival stuff. I got some a fire kit in here um, and a bunch of other stuff and what else? Uh, yeah, first day that kind of crap. So it's kind of cool and it's molly so um, it fits on some of my packs. It's got some webbing on the back. So basically you just grab this and pull it open. There's Velcro there and then the zippers will open up. So it's kind of cool and I'm trying to use that all the time so this will go with me and what was great about this on my hunting pack uh, and my hiking pack is I can mount the Mora to it with that Molly webbing. So that's the setup there, whether it's upside down or right side up, however you want it, you can, you can rock that. So that works and uh, yeah, great little system. So here's a great little pack. I've had this for years. I don't know how long I've had it, I, a long time. I have only used it a few times because I kind of use it as a backup, but it's an amazing little system here. It's outdoor research. I'll see if I can, uh, Find a link to this guy and it's got uh, a couple water bottle side pouches here it's got on the back here we've got some webbing so you can hang crap off it and it's a very cool deal and again it weighs nothing we're talking ounces it's very thin i believe it's waterproof it's got a roll top um, on it so you can uh, cinch it up and it's nice and waterproof and it's just a beauty little knapsack I don't know how big it is, maybe 20 liters, but it's just a sweet little thing. It's a great design. This is something you might take with you um, in case you're gonna bring something home, uh, you, you know, as a backup, whatever. Uh, but this thing is great. I, I love it. And this is something I'll end up keeping until I destroy it. 
So this has been in my pocket all the time, and this is my EDC for sure, and it's a Spyderco uh, Native 5 Lightweight, and it's been great. I love it. It's a lock back, so it's not really quick to open, so I kind of miss that. Um, uh, you know, my ZT just kind of flung open. I kind of I kind of miss that action. So maybe I'll do uh, another Spyderco with the faster action, not a lock back. But I'm definitely thinking I need a serrated blade because I'm doing a ton of... Uh, I'm cutting a ton of rope, not on the boat, um, just the stuff I've been doing uh, work-wise. I've, I've been cutting rope all the time, and a serrated blade might be the way to go. But this has been great, really lightweight, loving it so far. But again, it's just uh, I, I can't get this open like my old CT, and I knew that in the beginning. That's just not what this thing does. This is a, it's called a power cap, and my mom got me this years ago. And this thing's awesome if you don't want to carry an extra light. Uh, you can get the lights that clip on your baseball hat. This one's got it built in, a couple LEDs, and the battery is, where is it? It's back here. There's the battery pack, and it's got these two LEDs, and basically, you just push this button, and there you go. So it's kind of cool if you're in the evening fly fishing or doing whatever you're doing, and, you know, it's there. The light's ready to go. I'll put a link to one of these guys in the description as well, but this is pretty cool. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon.